Dr. Holt. This is AP Physics C. This lecture is on rolling motion. I want to talk about two conditions here. The first one is going to be pure translational. The second one is going to be pure rotational. And then I want to combine the two using translational and rotational. Let's say I have a cylinder and it's traveling at a constant velocity to the right. So I will apply a velocity going this direction here. And I will color code that real quickly so you can, doesn't, so you can see it real well. I'll make it red. That is going to be the velocity of the center of mass at that point. Okay. It would be as if I applied a force at the center of mass and then the object would accelerate. I remove the force and now we're going to let the, the, the uh, mass travel at a constant velocity to the right. Now note, I could pick particles. Let's pick a particle here. I'll pick a little particle here, a particle here, and let's say I pick a particle here. Now if I'm in pure translational, every particle will have the same velocity. So I'm just going to clone these and show you what I mean. Again, there's no friction at all being applied at any point along here. This is just pure translational. This cylinder is moving to the right at a constant velocity. So everything in here will be the same velocity. This is velocity here, velocity here, and velocity here. All particles within this object will have the same velocity to the right. Now let's do pure rotational. Let's apply a angular velocity, and we'll call that omega. We have it going clockwise, and we're going to make it so that omega times the radius is going to give us the same magnitude as the velocity. So that's the case. I will come over here. I want to clone these. I would have a velocity at this point, at this direction. I will clone this. And now at the bottom, I've got to reverse the arrows because the velocity is going to go back, going back the other way. At the bottom, I'd have a velocity going this direction here. Now at, the, at these points here, I would have a velocity. And I'll try to draw this approximately the same height. I'm not going to be the best at this, but pretty close. Okay, again, this is just pure rotational. It has no translational velocity. It's just spinning around the center of mass with a constant velocity in this direction here. These would all be the velocities. Now note, the velocity of the center of mass here is zero. Because this object is not moving to the right, it's not moving up, it's not moving down. The velocity of the center of mass is equal to zero. Now, let's add these two together and see what happens. I'm going to add these two together, and down here I'll show you the resultant. So if I add these, we add two, the two vectors together. I will bring this guy, I will clone him. I will bring him down and put him right here. I will take him, clone him, bring him down here. I will take the center mass, clone him, bring him down here. Okay. I'm also going to pick the two points out to the side since I picked them up here. So we're going to clone those. Pick this part, little piece right here. And then I'll do the other one over here. Okay, so right now I've just put, I've just placed one, two, three, four, five translational velocities onto that. Now we're going to start putting the rotational components in. I bring this one down here, clone it, bring him into the picture. He would be right here. I will bring this one down here. I will clone him, bring him into the picture here. I will bring this one. I will clone it and bring it down to here. Okay, get those lined up perfectly. And I will bring this one 
and then clone it down to here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add those together and let's look and see what happens. If I add these two vectors together, could I not replace it with a single vector velocity of this value right here? I'll make that into blue. Add that one. And let's go ahead and add these two vectors together. So remember, we add vectors, we go from head to tail. Okay, and I'm going to just take these away because we're adding those two vectors, replace it with the, with the resultant vector. I'll do the same thing up here. Add these two together. Oops, don't want to do that. Add this one together, bring it over here, put it head to tail. I'll draw this vector into here. Oops, I get the colors right here. Get rid of that one and get rid of that one. All right, and now look what happened down below. What's happened below are my two velocities cancel out. So I know at this point right there, my velocity is equal to zero. But what's happened at the top? I've doubled my velocity. So my velocity here is gonna equal to two times the velocity of the center of mass here. And now isn't this velocity here going to equal to the center of mass here? Oh, sorry about that. Okay, but now what's taking place here? Notice that if I draw a line from here back to that rotational point, and if I draw a line from here back to that rotational point, what I end up getting is I get a, this is a right angle here and here. Now, if, could I not say that if I took my angular velocity omega, This is omega. Could I not say that the velocity, and I'm going to prove this on, in the next slide, that the velocity of center mass is going to equal to my angular velocity times the radius. That's going to give me this velocity here. And could I not say that the velocity at the top, I'll put top, I don't want you to think it's tangent. The velocity at the top is going to equal to omega times 2r. If I wanted these velocities, all I'd have to do is take omega and then multiply it by the distance from there to there. And I would get what this velocity is here as well as here. That's what happens when you add a translational rotation, excuse me, translational to rotational motion. You're going to get velocity at the bottom to be zero. The velocity at the top will be two times the velocity of the center mass and the velocity at the middle will equal the velocity of center mass. All right, let's look at one more. I think I have another one. Oh, there we go. In this example, I have an, a cylinder. We'll say this is point A. And I'm going to rotate this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like I apply a force to it, I'm gonna rotate it. It's gonna do one entire rotation. A is going to travel around this as I move to the right. A is going to return back to this position here. I'm gonna let this be the distance of D. Now we know that if I do one rotation, we know that the circumference is equal to two pi times the radius. Now let's just pick a time, let's let time equal to t. It's taken me t seconds to go one rotation in that position over here. So we'll call this position one and we'll call this position two. Could I not say that the distance d divided by t is equal to two pi times the radius divided by t? 
erase this a little bit down here. Well, distance divided by time, isn't that just the velocity of my center of mass? So the velocity of my center of mass, isn't that equal to two pi over t times r? But note, two pi divided by t, I'm traveling two pi radians for every rotation divided by t. That's the definition right there of omega. Omega is how many radians I go per second. So look what equation you end up with. You end up with the velocity of the center of mass is equal to omega times radius. So when you have a wheel that is rotating about a surface, and you want to find out what the tangential, excuse me, what the velocity of the center of mass is, or any velocity within this wheel, all you have to do is pick the point right here, apply your angular velocity to it like this, and I could say the velocity of my center of mass is going to equal to omega times the radius. And that will give me a velocity of center mass. If I want the velocity again up at the top, draw it twice the size, that the velocity at the top is just going to equal to omega times the diameter, or 2r. And you notice that the velocity at the top is going to be twice the velocity of the center of mass. Anyway, I hope this video was useful, but I hope it helped you understand that the velocity at the bottom, at the rotational point, the velocity at that point, right when it makes contact, instantaneously, the velocity is equal to zero. And again, you can find the velocity of the center mass by just taking omega, multiplying it by the radius. Best of luck.